All right. Is it on? Sweet. Okay. Now I dread family reunions. Don't get me wrong. I love my family. I just can't stand when they ask me, what are you studying? The problem is I'm still in high school, so I can't answer that question. For the past four years, they've forgotten that I'm still in high school. But that's still okay. But when I tell them that, they act just as surprised as they were the first time, and then they ask me, what do you plan on studying? The truth is I am a clueless human being, and I don't know what I want to study, but I know that they have a point. I should have some sort of an idea of what it is that I want to do. So I ask myself some basic questions that we all have for ourselves. What do I want to do? What do I enjoy? What am I doing right now? And am I the person that I want to be? With all that in mind, I realize I need to prioritize my interests so that, I can so that I know what I want to pursue in the future. And so a few years ago, I attended a seminar by a professor from the Bayina Institute named Naman Ali Khan, and he devised what he called the seven stages of personality or the hierarchy of pursuits. I want to accredit him to this model because it is his own original design, but I have my own unique interpretation of the stages and their significance. Now, the one thing that's no to note about this model is that it's symbolic of a pyramid. This, by the way, is a pyramid, in case you don't know. They're pretty cool. So, as you can see, the largest piece is at the base, and the smallest piece is at the top, and the levels get progressively smaller. Now, the size of the level is symbolic of the number of people you'll find within each respective stage, and that has an inverse relationship to the effort that it takes. So, in simpler terms, what that means is that the beginning stages at the lower levels take the least amount of effort, and you'll find the most amount of people there. On the other hand, those at the top require the most amount of effort, and you'll find the least amount of people there. So with that in mind, let's just get started. So the first stage in this model is the pursuit of happiness. Sounds familiar because we know this, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Now, it seems strange to call this the lowest level when happiness is such a pivotal part of all of our lives. But that's exactly the point. All of us strive to pursue happiness. Its pursuit isn't really unique in any way, and it's not that easy to go for it. Some of us can pursue happiness by watching Netflix all day. Some of us by being with friends. And some of us somehow can do it by doing absolutely nothing. For me personally, I can play 2K for a couple of hours eating cheese puffs. And that makes me pretty happy. So the next stage is the pursuit of social acceptability, otherwise known as the pursuit of cool. These are the kinds of people that don't want to stand out too much, and they try to fit in to live normal, average, everyday lives. The reason why cool is above happiness is because you still have to adopt some societal norms so you don't stand out too much socially. All right? The next stage is the pursuit of popularity. These are the people that will do anything that's considered wild, crazy, innovative, or funny just to stand out to gain the love of people because they love the attention. Secondly, they're also extremely sociable because of their love of the love of people. Now, the downside to popularity, though, is that those who pursue it when they don't attain the love of those around them, they can fall into a state of deep sadness or, in some extreme cases, depression because the love of other people is the only thing that lets them feel any form of self-worth within their lives. Next, we're going to kill two birds with one stone. We have money and prestige. Sweet. So both of these deal with material gains, obviously. Now, money refers to wanting stacks on stacks in your bank account. These people work extremely hard to get the money that they want, but they're also extremely stingy and kind of unlikable, kind of like the Scrooges of the real world before he turned good. Now, prestige, on the other hand, like those who pursue money, are extremely hardworking people. Those who per pursue prestige, however, spend their money on luxurious items in an effort to leave some sort of a legacy. So these are the people that will buy the nicest car, the nicest house, just so that they can stand out. Ironically, though, the legacy that they're trying to leave is really short-lived because it's rooted in material. So, down the line, after they're gone, they'll be remembered as the guy who had the nice car. But over time, that car is replaced and becomes obsolete due to newer models, and then they're forgotten with that car as well. Next, we have the pursuit of excellence. There it is. Now, those who pursue excellence push themselves to unbelievable limits. The only people that they want to outdo are themselves. The 24 hours in a day to these people isn't a luxury to enjoy, but rather a challenge to see what can be done within that time period. So let me give you, give you a couple of examples. You have that one kid in your math class who got a 99% on their exam and is fighting that teacher for the extra credit. Meanwhile, you think that they're crazy because you take your 75% and you put it on the fridge at home to show your mom how proud you are. Then you have those athletes who don't just want to be on the school's team. They want to be on the All-State team. Wait, no, they want to be on the All-American team. And not only that, they want to break some records along the way. 
The limits that these guys push themselves to is unbelievable. The downside here, though, is that there are limits to how many times you can break your own records. So when they fail to break their own records, they will work harder and harder and harder, but it just becomes an endless cycle of dissatisfaction. So now the final level in this model is the pursuit of impact. You can probably know this because of the name of this talk, but you know, we'll still talk about it. So impact is really unique because these first six levels, happiness, cool, popularity, money, prestige, and excellence, they all deal with the self. Impact, on the other hand, goes beyond all of these things because it refers to your influence on other people. Now, first of all, it would make sense to say that we should all pursue impact. If everybody here was altruistic or if everyone was selfless and cared about the needs of others ahead of themselves, the world would be a much better place. It's the truth. But as you can tell, this is at the top of the model. So if you forgot, what that means is you'll find the least amount of people here because it takes the most amount of effort. And there's two reasons as to why very few people choose to pursue impact. The first reason being that is the materialistic nature of human beings today. Now, I don't mean materialism in terms of us wanting the most updated technologies or following the newest trends. What I mean is materialism within our relations today, not just relations with not just romantic relations, but relations with family, friends, and the rest of society as well. Nowadays, relations are extremely fragile. This shouldn't be seen as a surprise because of the fact that there seems to be this societal mentality that no one is to be trusted and everyone's out for their own self-interests. Common stereotypes, such as addressing one another as snakes, or the nature of gossiping and backbiting other people, is destroying the ability for some to maintain positive relations with others. That's because instead of communicating to resolve conflicts and issues, the other person is thrown away like a broken phone. If your phone screen breaks, you buy a new one. He lied to you, you get a new one. It's the same mentality. We've turned, right. We've turned our loved ones and those around us into a means for our own happiness. And when they fail to supply that happiness, they're thrown away like a material good. Now, the second reason as to why very few people choose to pursue impact is the inability to recognize the good that others can do. This is really clear in an age-old high school debate, theater and band kids versus athletes. It's pretty controversial, I know. So the theater kids are going to argue that they're in school every single day till 10 p.m. during tech week, working to perfect their performances. On the other hand, athletes will argue that they're working tirelessly in the gym to get in shape for the season. Then the band kids will argue that they're working tirelessly countless hours in the day to perfect their technique on their instruments. Then you have the athletes that will argue that they're working countless hours on the field or on the court to get ready for the game, perfecting their sportsmanship. Now the arguments for both sides go on and on and on. And I can go on for hours about this, but I don't want to. But the truth is, the sad part is that during this debate, both sides forget just how hardworking, honorable, and dedicated the other side is. You don't have to choose between music, theater, or athletics. The effort on all sides is incredible. It's just a natural part of being human to want to be the best at something. And when someone's accomplishments are different than your own, you justify yourself being better by belittling the accomplishments of other people. This is problematic because this isolates groups into thinking that they're far superior to some other groups. And that's the second reason as to why very few people choose to pursue impact. So now let's turn the tables a little bit. Let's look at how is it that you and I can pursue impact. And really, the first step is to change your mentality. Don't have a toxic opinion of other people, regardless of who they are. Look to your left and look to your right. Okay, the light's blinding me. I can tell you guys aren't looking. Come on, do it. Look to your left and look to your right, right? There's someone else there that, is, that could be entirely different than you are. Their opinions, their persona could be completely different. But at the end of the day, those opinions, that persona, and those ideas are just as valuable as yours are. When you have that shift in mentality, you'll realize that the idea of pursuing impact is actually something really honorable, and it's not seen as a burden. The second step is to renew your intentions. The idea of pursuing impact doesn't solely refer to huge societal and worldly changes. I'm not telling you all to get onto the next plane, going to the most impoverished countries in the world to feed starving children by hand. If you're doing that, that's great. Keep doing what you're doing. But chances are, most of us can't do those things, and that's completely okay. Every single day, you're interacting with different people, unless you're the kind of person that's at home all day. Please change that, that's not healthy. But with every, with every interaction that you have with another person, you're impacting their life in some way. Like I said, we treat people nowadays as a means to our own happiness. Change that mentality. Recognize that what you're doing could be for the benefit of another person. Any benefits that come to you should be seen as far less significant. When you get home from school, tell your family and tell your, fr tell your family and your parents that you love them. It's the least that you could do. Agree to help your friends with their errands. Agree to assist your siblings with their homework, no matter how easy you think it is. Agree to respect your teachers and those above you. 
because they deserve that respect, even if you don't like them. Those minute actions can be a testament of you pursuing impact. If you're in a stable career or if you're pursuing a career, pursue that career because of the good that you can give to other people. For example, once I asked a friend of mine what he wants to do when he's older, kind of like my, what my relatives do, but it's okay. So, he had, so when I asked him, he said he wants to be an anesthesiologist. I said, that's awesome. Why, though? And then he told me that he Googled the highest paying job on average, and that was a search result. So obviously the case here is that I love the guy, but his motive's all wrong. Right now he's pursuing impact, but the truth is, for him to pursue, no, right, right now he's pursuing money, sorry. But in order for him to pursue impact, all it takes is a change in perspective. So what that really means is that the best way for you and I to pursue impact is simply by changing your mentality as you live your everyday life. Now let's take a quick reality check for one second. I know that it's not easy to wake up every single day thinking like this. It's not easy waking up thinking, I'm gonna change the world, I'm going to be awesome, I'm gonna pursue impact. There are some days you wake up and you don't wanna get out of bed. Trust me, I've had those days. There are days where I don't even try to pursue cool. I just pursue happiness because cool and popularity take way too much effort for me on those days. When I wake up in the morning, I look at myself and think, do I really want to get out of bed? No. So then I grab my phone, I watch Netflix and YouTube all day, and I tell my friends and my family I'm way too busy to go out. We have those days. It's part of being human. There are some days you're going to want to pursue money, especially on payday. There are some days you're going to pursue excellence when you go to the gym for once or when you finally study for that test or start working on your college apps, for example. All of those things are testaments of being human. Pursuing these other stages just means that you're a normal human being. You're not a terrible person. It's okay. But at the same time, don't be complacent. If you know that you're a person who just pursues popularity or prestige, don't be okay with that. Push yourself once in a while to try to help other people. Go beyond yourself. And so finally, the last thing I really want to lightly touch upon is why pursue impact in the first place. Because I've been talking about it, it seems great, but why though? So here's the reason why. The world today is fairly screwed up, to say the least. We blame personal issues on society. Yeah, society's at fault, but we always forget that society is made up of people like you and me. If we want to see these large-scale changes that we're loathing for, that change has to start with us. So when you walk out of that door today, either door doesn't really matter, recognize that your pursuit of impact isn't going to be in vain. It doesn't matter, if you, no, it doesn't matter how insignificant you think your actions are. It doesn't matter if you're the only person out of everybody in your life that chooses to pursue impact. As long as you're doing something positive that will cause a positive change in your life and in the lives of those around you, then what you're doing is enough. So when you have that change in mindset, you're going to see the world in a whole new light, one that you've managed to influence in some way. So always remember, if you're not waking up every single day knowing that you're a better person than you were the day before, then you're not really living. Thank you.